Hello, and welcome to the how-to video for the Certificate of Restoration of Opportunity Petition, otherwise known as the CROP application. We will focus on the filing process, which includes these five steps. If you are watching and you have questions about your eligibility criteria or about how a CROP might help you, we suggest you pause the video here and access any of the following resources before continuing on. Let's get started with step number one. Getting your paperwork together will be easiest if you have internet access, so we'll work through some parts on the computer. We recommend you download the forms yourself straight from the court's website. To get the forms, go to www.courts.wa.gov. Use the search bar at the top of the page and type in Certificate of Restoration of Opportunity. Select the link for the language you prefer from the options available. The first link is for English. To keep it simple, print or download the following four forms from this page. The petition, the notice of filing, the proof of service, and the order. You do not need the order of dismissal. Leave these forms blank for now, and we'll go on to step number two, your background check. Unfortunately, there is a $12 fee to get a copy of your background check online, and you have to pay with a credit or debit card. If you're unable to do that, we recommend you ask a friend, a family member, a social service agency, or a legal aid provider near you for help. You can get a copy of your State Patrol background check from the State Patrol's website. Go online to www.watch.wsp.wa.gov. If you are new to this site, you will need to establish a new credit card account before you can conduct a criminal history search. Once you've filled out the form, submit your search request and follow the instructions to get your report. Print a copy for your application packet and to help you complete step number three, filling out the court forms. The forms themselves aren't too complicated, but there are a few important decisions you'll have to make for yourself along the way. We'll go through the forms as thoroughly as we can to make sure that you're putting all the right information in all the right places. Take a look at the first sheet, which should be the petition. The first blank line at the top of the sheet asks for the county that you're filing your application in. You do have to file in a superior court, even if your conviction history includes convictions from district and or municipal courts. Fortunately, you have a couple options. You can choose to file in the county where you currently live, or you can choose to file in any county where you have a past conviction. So choose whichever you prefer and write the name of that county at the top of your petition. I'll be filing mine here in Kitsap County Superior Court. Then write your full name where it says petitioner. Leave the civil case number blank for now and we'll come back to it. The next decision you will have to make is whether you would like the crop to apply to your entire criminal history in Washington State or to just a few specific convictions. At a minimum, you have to include your most recent conviction. So think about the convictions that impact you the most now, then make sure that each of those meet the eligibility criteria for a crop. If your whole record qualifies, you may want to include everything. If some convictions do and some convictions don't, you may want to limit your application to the most important ones. Sign and date on the bottom and you're ready to move on. The next page is the declaration. You'll enter your name first and then you'll specify why you selected the court that you did. Remember, you chose your court either because it's the county where you reside, the county where you were sentenced or adjudicated, or it's the county where you were sentenced by a district or municipal court. For example, if you were convicted in Seattle Municipal Court, you would file your application in King County Superior Court. The next statement says that you provided the prosecuting attorney in this county with written notice of your petition. You haven't done that yet, but you'll do it on the same day that you file your petition. If you have a conviction from any jurisdiction other than the jurisdiction in which you're filing your petition, you will have to notify some other prosecutors as well. We'll talk about how to do that later. For now, go ahead and check the box. In section number three, you'll need to fill out the table with details on every conviction you have in the county where you're filing you'll find this information on your State Patrol background check. If you need more space, write additional convictions on a blank sheet and attach it to the back of this page. 
On the next page, there's a table for convictions in other counties. Fill this table out the same way with your most recent conviction first. Section 4 helps you go through all of the eligibility criteria for the certificate. The first part asks about misdemeanors. If you're not including any misdemeanors on your application, check does not apply. If you have a misdemeanor, a gross misdemeanor, or an equivalent juvenile conviction, you'll want to select one of the other boxes. If you were convicted of a misdemeanor or an equivalent juvenile conviction, but you did not serve any time in jail, you'll need to wait one year from the date of sentencing before you can apply. If you were convicted of a misdemeanor and you did go to jail, you'll have to wait 18 months from the day you were released from jail before you can apply. Next, they ask about felonies. If you are not including any felonies on your application, check does not apply. If you were convicted of a felony and you did not have to serve any time in jail or prison, you'll have to wait two years from the date you were sentenced before you can apply. If you were convicted of a felony and you did serve time in jail or prison, you'll have to wait two years from the date of release from jail or prison before you can apply. And finally, they ask about violent offenses. There are longer wait times for violent offenses. If you're unsure whether your conviction qualifies as a violent offense or not, you can search online for this number. RCW 9.94A.030. There you can find a list of all convictions that are considered violent offenses. Read through the eligibility criteria and select the box that applies to you. Number five checks that you are in compliance with your sentencing requirements that are unrelated to incarceration. The conditions of your sentence will be listed in the judgment and sentence document for each conviction. We'll explain how to get those documents later. Legal financial obligations are the fees, fines, and restitution associated with a criminal conviction in Washington State. If you haven't finished paying your LFOs, you'll have to show that you are making your court-ordered payments, or show proof that you can't make those payments due to a financial hardship. Check the box that applies to you. If you have any questions about this step, contact a legal aid organization like Columbia Legal Services for help. Number six and seven list the types of convictions for which you cannot get a Certificate of Restoration of Opportunity. Number eight clarifies that you may not have been arrested for nor convicted of any crime since the most recent conviction you listed. Number nine simply asks for an address where you're willing to receive mail. And once you fill that out, you can move on to the signature line. List the city and state where you're applying, today's date, print your name and sign. The next two documents are both about notifying the appropriate prosecuting attorney's offices that you're filing for your crop. We'll fill these out now, even though you haven't notified the offices yet, and we'll come back to them later. The first of the two forms is the notice. This simple form is what you need to fill out to give notice to the prosecutor in your county. You'll need to fill out one of these forms for each prosecutor that you're required to serve notice to. Again, make sure to write the name of the county and your name, and we'll fill out the civil case number a little later. If you have to serve prosecuting attorneys in counties where you don't live, you can mail in this form. Make sure to look up all of the appropriate addresses and have those forms ready to go in envelopes for the day you file your petition. If you are mailing notice to any prosecutors, you'll want to make sure to put this document in the mail the same day you file. You'll want the date to reflect the day that you filed your petition. If you don't know what day you'll file on yet, wait until you do know and come back to this later. Sign, print your name, and write your address. Next is the proof of service of notice. This document is your legal statement to the court that you notified all of the appropriate prosecutors. Fill out the county in your name first. If you are filling out your own application, check the box that says, I am the petitioner. On the date line, Write in the day that you'll be filing your petition and either handing in or mailing all of your prosecutor notices. List the name of the county for the prosecutor or prosecutors you served and fill out their addresses. You can find those easily online. You'll need one of these forms for each prosecutor that you served and you'll specify on each one whether you serve them by mail or by personal delivery. Sign and date again with the location where you're filing. The final court form is the proposed order. This is actually for the judge to fill out, but to make their life a little easier, you can go ahead and fill out the county and your name like on the other forms, but leave the rest blank. Step number four is to get copies of your individual case records. To do that, we'll head over to the clerk's office.
All right, so here we are now outside the office of the county clerk. The clerk is the person you need to speak to to get copies of your court records for your individual case numbers. Each clerk can only give you records from their court, so if you need to get records from multiple counties, you'll have to contact multiple clerks. For the most part, you can request records online or in person, so contact the appropriate clerks directly to get instructions for both of those options. You'll want to get copies of both your judgment and sentence and your LFO payment history for every case number you listed on your petition. So once again, if you have to go to multiple counties for these records, this step could take a little longer. These records are the last pieces of your application packet. Assemble your packet with the court forms on top, followed by your state patrol background check, and then the court records we just got, ordered from newest to oldest. All right, great job. At this point, your paperwork should be complete. The last thing to do before you head to the clerk's office to file your petition is to make some copies. You'll want one copy of your complete application packet for yourself, one copy for the court clerk, and an additional copy for every prosecutor that you need to serve notice to. If you only need to notify a single prosecutor, that's three total copies. Most courthouses have a copy machine you can use for a small fee if that's most convenient. Now that we have our copies, we can head back to the clerk's office for the final step, submitting your application. So we're back at the clerk's office now and it's time to file your petition. There will be a fee associated with this step, but if you can't afford it, let the clerk know and ask for instructions for a fee waiver. The clerk will open a new case for you and give you a civil cause number. You'll wanna take that number and write it at the top of each court form in each copy of your application packet. Take a few minutes now to do that and we'll come back in a minute. So now you should have the cause number written at the top of each court form in each copy of your application packet. You'll leave one copy of the packet here with the clerk and you'll take another to the prosecutor's office. You can check the court directory or ask for directions to the location of the prosecutor's office in your court. If you need to serve multiple prosecutors in multiple jurisdictions, you may have to look online for their contact information so you can serve them by mail. Here in Kitsap County, the prosecutor is just down the hall, so I'll be headed over there now. Okay. Once you've located the reception area in the prosecutor's office in your court, you'll want to turn in a copy of your application packet and let them know that you've filed your petition. If you only have to serve notice to a single prosecutor, this step will be easy. But if you have to serve notice to multiple prosecutors in multiple counties, this could take a little bit longer, especially if you have to mail in your forms. Do this as quickly as you can though, because once these forms are in, your filing is complete. What happens next will depend on your individual application and the county in which you filed. The law says that most people who apply for a crop shouldn't have to come in for a hearing, but a court can request you to do so if they have questions. Here in Kitsap County, the whole process is pretty quick because they've set up a system where a single prosecutor and a single judge review every application. Your court may operate in a different way and the process may take a little longer. If you have to go in for a hearing, that could delay things even further. But have patience and feel free to contact the clerk or the prosecutor's office if a few weeks have passed and you haven't heard anything. And that's it. Your application is in. Thank you for watching and good luck.